Hi everyone, Lloyd here with our very first example of using Excel to compute some statistics. Actually, the only statistic we'll calculate in this example is one you already know well, the average. Though in statistical circles, the average is called the mean, so we might as well start using the right lingo. This example is deliberately meant to be very simple in order to give you an idea of what it feels like to build an Excel spreadsheet by following me in a video. I will talk rather quickly because, frankly, I know talking slowly would be painful for you. Plus, I know you have the power of the pause and rewind controls, so use them. Also, a little disclaimer that I expect you to already know the basics of Excel. You need to be able to enter numbers, formulas, and functions as well as edit them as needed. However, in this first video, I'll explain a few Excel techniques that you probably already know, just to make sure I don't make too many assumptions. The main point is that I am trying to teach you about statistics, not Excel. However, I bet you'll pick up a few new Excel tricks along the way, and hopefully you'll teach me some too. I'm also using the uh, Macintosh Excel 2011 version, so if you are not, then obviously your Excel experience will be slightly different. Okay, let's get started. Imagine you just went bowling with three friends and you were elected as group statistician. You told everyone you would email their bowling averages to them. First, you need to launch Excel. If you haven't, pause the recording and do so. Next, let's immediately choose to save the spreadsheet. We'll choose Save As from the File menu and give the spreadsheet a descriptive file title. So I'll go up to File, choose Save As, and uh, you'll see that I've already created a folder for the course and I've created a folder within it for the Welcome and Orientation uh, module. So let me open up that folder and now I want to give it a, a nice descriptive name. I suggest a title construction that always begins with your last name, hyphen, and then some, some descriptive word. Let's put in bowling. Okay. So we have a blank spreadsheet. We need to decide how we're going to lay this thing out. And um, the, the way that uh, statisticians like to lay out their, uh, their, data, their data files is where every row is going to be a person or a participant or just a record and every column is going to be a data source. So let's go down to, oh, let's just say uh, uh, row number 10 and let's put in some labels to begin with. So we're going to have uh, four friends who bold. So let's put a nice label of, n of name. Hit the tab key to go to the next column. Let's type in score one tab over to the next column, score 2, and then tab over to the next column, score 3. In bowling, three games is the typical uh, typical match. And let's tab over one more time, and even though we've already said that statisticians use the word mean, this is bowling after all, so we'll put in average. So that's what bowlers would understand. And I press return, and it comes down to the next line. Okay, let's put in the names of the four bowlers. Let's start with Ann, press return, Bob, press return, Cindy, press return, and Don. All right, let's enter some scores. Ann is a pretty good bowler. Her scores were 176, tab over, 165, tab over, 179 press return. Bob is probably the best bowler of the group. He started off with a 207, followed by a 224, and tab over, and this final game was a 198. Press return. Cindy is no slouch either. She had a 137, tab 154, tab over 142 press return. And Don is a little new, so uh, his scores are not quite that high. Uh, he started off with an 82, followed that by a 79, but 
he did break the 100 mark. So that's really great. And we'll press return. Of course, this is bowling, so 300 is the highest possible score. Okay, well, it's time to enter uh, some averages. So let's go over to the cell for and underneath the column for average. Now, I'm pretty sure that you know that Excel does have an average function, but we are deliberately not going to use it. The reason is that we want to follow a pattern where we get as close to the data as possible and do calculations in such a way uh, as for us to know what is really happening to the numbers. But at the end, we can use Excel's built-in functions to check our work. Now, um, there is another function we are going to use called sum, where we want uh, uh, Excel to sum up or add up uh, a series of numbers. So we're going to start with that. Now, there's a, there's a lot of ways to uh, enter functions. We're, we're going to be using, amazingly, a very few number of functions overall. So we're just going to type these out. So any formula or function always begins with an, an equal sign. So just type that, followed by sum. It's always interesting in Excel, as you start to type, it tries to figure out which um, function you want. And every function is going to have um, uh, the contents uh, or the range be surrounded by parentheses. So let's have an uh, open parenthesis, knowing that in math, every time we have an open parenthesis, eventually we have to close that up. OK, well, let's get the range of numbers to be summed. And I love this in Excel. I can just click on the first score, click and hold, and drag over to all three. And you can see how we have built the range here, B11 colon D11. And I, always, I always think of the colon as meaning uh, all the way to. Now we just need to put it in our uh, final close parenthesis, press return. Now, obviously, 520 is not Anne's average. We know we need to divide by 3. So this is a good example now where we need to go back to that uh, function, and we need to uh, edit it a little bit. So we're going to go up to the formula bar, and we're going to type uh, a forward slash, which is for divide 3, and press return. And you can see we have uh, an average for Ann of 173.333333. <laughs> uh, and I'll show you later how we can round that off. All right, now what we want to do is be able to uh, uh, take that first average and be able to uh, copy and paste it down. Now, you might be tempted to say, well, Lord, I, I'll just redo the average for every single person. But, you know, we only have three more people to go, but maybe you could have 3,000 people. So we want to use uh, a really wonderful feature of Excel, one that I'm sure you know, and it's just, again, it's just so powerful. It, the idea of filling down a, a formula or a function. So here's how we do it. We click and hold on the starting formula, and then again, we click and hold. As you hold, you just highlight all of the cells where you want that function to be copied and pasted. And now what we do, we have to fill down. In my version of Excel, I have to go up to Edit and choose Fill Down. And there we have those other averages. Now, by the way, your version of Excel, uh, again, if it's different, you may have to search out where that Fill Down or Fill Right, whatever the case may be, um, option is located. And, and uh, on I think the Windows side, you actually have the shortcut key of Control D for down, Control uh, Control R for for right, which I I love. I wish we had that on the Macintosh. When, uh, what's really great about this particular uh, technique is, again, if you go and click on Anne's average, you can see up in the formula bar it goes from B11 to D11. Well, Anne's in row 11. As I go to Bob, he's in row 12, and you can see that the formula was updated automatically for row 12, and the same thing happens for Cindy and Don. Now, so we have the formula was copied and pasted relative to the new position. Sometimes, though, we will want a particular part of a formula or function to reference some definite value, and so we will not want it to get updated to a relative location. In other words, we will want the reference to be absolute, not relative. I'll show how to do that when, when the need arises in a future video. 
Okay, uh, let's go ahead and move on here. Let's compute some more averages. Let's see how the group did as a whole on each of the three games. So let's start down here. We'll go down to uh, row 16, column B. We'll, we'll kind of give an extra space in between there. And we'll do the very same thing as we, as we did before to get started. We'll press the equal sign. We'll type sum and then the open parenthesis. Then we'll click, hold, and drag for the range of scores. Then closing the parenthesis. And now since we're here, we might as well go ahead and divide with the forward slash. And, and of course, 4 is what we need to enter there. All right, so the group had an average of 150.5 on the first game. Now let's go ahead and do that fill technique again. And this time, of course, we'll be filling to the right to copy and paste that formula relative to the new column. So I click and hold, drag over to the right, and let's keep going all the way over to, even to the average column. Now I'll go up to edit and choose to fill to the right. And we can kind of see here that uh, the group was amazingly consistent from uh, games one, two, and three. And you can see their overall average was 153.66667. Uh, that average of the averages has a very special name in statistical circles. It's called the grand mean. Okay, uh, excellent. Let's do one more thing. Let's do some rounding off. So uh, I'll just round off all the scores in column E. So I'll choose to select the entire column just by clicking on the E itself at the very top. I see the column is selected. Now what I want to do is uh, round off all of those. Let's just say to one decimal point. A couple ways of doing this. Uh, I'll, I'll do it the long way first. If you go up to Format, you can come down to Cells. And I get this Format Cells. Um, tab here and I'm going to come down to the category of number and you'll see decimal places we'll put in a one for uh, to round off to the nearest tenth and there we go however there's a nice shortcut way of doing that that I really like which uh, involves using a right click and both on the Mac and Windows side of Excel, you'll, you'll find this to be a, a, a great time saver. So again, make sure that the column is selected. And then anywhere inside the column, just go ahead and do a right click. And you will see that there's the choice of format cells. And there we go. We have that nice set of choices there. And even remember that I was on the number choice before. But we'll keep it as decimal places one. Click OK. All right, let's go over now and uh, do a quick save, Command S or Control S. We want to do that frequently. Okay, well, before we, before we end, why don't we check our work? And we can check our work with the built-in average function that Excel has. So let's just go down to row 11 in column F, right beside Ann's bowling average. And let's enter this, uh, this average function. So again, it starts with the equal sign. And then the, the key word is average. So we'll just type that, open up our parentheses, and then once again, we're going to choose the range by clicking, holding, and dragging from score one over to score three, closing our parentheses, pressing return. And there you have it. Uh, of course, it, we don't have this number rounded off. Uh, maybe we'll do that in just a second. Let's do it for the next three scores, same as before. We're going to click, hold, and drag down in order to then be able to go and fill down. So, great. And this will be a habit or routine we'll be using in other videos where, again, we'll, we'll do the calculations basically by hand, taking some nice little shortcuts uh, with Excel or letting Excel really do the hard work. But then we can use some of the other built-in functions, the statistical built-in functions, to check our work. What the heck, let's go ahead and round off this column. F, let me choose a column. I'll choose the right-click trick to format cells. 
go to the category number and just one decimal place. Excellent. Now that we've checked our work, let's go ahead and clear out those calculations in column F. And uh, to do that, we're just going to highlight that area that contains them. And I think the simplest way is to do a right click in the middle and choose to clear contents. Very good. Now, let's stop a moment. Look at your spreadsheet. Now look at mine. Is yours identical to mine? If not, then you need to make it so. Now, it's not that I'm a control freak, but I do want you to be successful and get the badge for this in every module. You see, after you complete this video, I'll be sending you a different set of bowling scores, a different data set in the parlance of statisticians, to enter into your spreadsheets. Then, of course, you will have different averages, means, for each bowler. The evaluation you need to complete to get your badge for this module will include a set of questions that will ask you for some key statistics, such as, what is Cindy's new bowling average? Or, what is the new grand mean? So, the spreadsheets you build must be identical to the ones I build in these video tutorials in order for you to come up with the right answers in the evaluation. Get it? Excellent. If not, let me know and I'll try to explain it better. Better yet, just try taking the evaluation of this module to see how it goes. Remember, you can take the module's evaluation as often as it takes. Okay, well, we are just about done. Let's be sure to save this, the spreadsheet one more time. Okay, this concludes this tutorial. Until next time.